are knowing, in depth, the current situation of aircraft and helicopter carriers worldwide. This is the general picture, which we have already seen, repeatedly, by countries, types, and classes of ships. And, as you can see, the aircraft carriers and the helicopter carriers, are grouped by types and classes. These are, all classes of aircraft and helicopter carriers, currently active with their respective navies. I remember that, in this series, ships with a capacity of less than 8 aircrafts, are not included. The information that appears on each vessel, is as follows. The flag of the country, that owns said class of ship in its military fleet. The name of the class to which, it belongs. The number of active units, precedes the by symbol. The number of units in sea trials, and about to be active, precedes, the plus sign in parentheses. In the third video, of the aircraft carrier and LHD series, we talk about the cattle bar type. And in the fourth video, of the aircraft carrier and LHD series, we talk about the Stobar type. In this fifth video, we are going to talk and describe the STOVL type ships, their characteristics, and their differences. And, in the next video of the aircraft and helicopter carrier series, we will finally see the VTOL ships. Let's see, previously, a summary of the current situation, of this type of ships, by type. Currently, the cattle bar type, is the strategy followed by the United States, almost uniquely. Of the total of 15 ships, we can see that 13 belong to the United States. The Stobar type is obsolete, as can easily be checked by these numbers. And it is clear that, it is a type of aircraft carrier that will tend to disappear. On the other hand, of the STOVL type, we see that it is the type of aircraft carrier, followed by the rest of the countries. Although, it should be remembered that, some current STOVL ships, they plan to install electromagnetic catapults, and would become the cattle bar type. Probably, within two years, four or six ships, will cease to be STOVL, to become the cattle bar type. And finally, of the VTOL type, we see that currently 50%, is distributed between the United States, and the rest of the countries. Although, some of these ships, they will end up with VTOL aircraft, as well. Conclusion, the cattle barn STOVL duality, will continue to be maintained, even, with the massive use of the next UAVs in the air fleets, of many of these vessels. The STOVL concept, indicates that they are ships where, airplanes, can take off in a short space, without the need for catapults. And where, the aircrafts, land vertically or, in a very short runway space, without the need for braking cables. Short Takeoff Vertical Landing, STOVL. At takeoff, airplanes usually, use the famous sky jump ramp, to reduce the runway length needed to raise the flight. Or, they are airplanes, that have VTOL technology, vertical takeoff landing, to land and take off vertically. The sky jump ramp, was an English invention, which was installed, for the first time, in 1980, 
with 7 degrees, until reaching the current 12 degrees. There are few planes, with VTOL features, in the world at today, and they are all American. The American VTOL aircraft are The AV-8 the Harrier This VTOL aircraft, in its American version, AV-8B, is currently part of the air wing of the following VSTOL aircraft carriers. On the current carriers, of the American class, until the year 2028, On the aircraft carrier Juan Carlos I, of the Spanish Navy. On the aircraft carriers Adelaide and Canberra, of the Australian Navy. And in the three aircraft carriers of the Italian Navy, Cavour, Trieste, and Giuseppe Garibaldi. The Turkish Navy is negotiating, with the USA, some Harrier aircrafts, for its Anadolu aircraft carrier, which likes them. The F-35B Lightning II This magnificent fifth-generation VTOL aircraft, unique in the world, is part of the following aircraft carriers. The two English Royal Navy aircraft carriers, the Queen Elizabeth, and the Prince of Wales, as the Sea Harrier were discharged. On the American aircraft carriers, of the American class, together with the AV-8B Harrier. On the Italian aircraft carrier Trieste, and of the Cavour once the adaptation of the ship, to the new VTOL aircraft, is finished. On the other hand, the Navy of Japan, is adapting its aircraft carriers, Izumo and Kaga, to incorporate this aircraft model, in the coming months. And the Australia Navy, wants to modify its Canberra aircraft carrier, to incorporate this aircraft into its air wing. the V-22 Osprey. This V-12 plane is also unique in the world. It is part of two navies only, the American, U.S. Navy and U.S. Marine Corps. And on the ships of the Japan Navy, These are, the classes of STOVL aircraft carriers, that are currently navigating with their navy, by country. In red, there are ships that, currently, do not have an airborne wing, and only have helicopters on board. The first is, the Chakri Narubet, of the Thai Navy. It belongs to the Principe de Asturias class, manufactured by Nervantes Spanish company, formerly Basin. And the second is, 
the Turkish aircraft carrier Anadolu, of the Juan Carlos First Class, also manufactured by the Navantia Spanish Company. If we now group them by classes, manufacturer, and eliminate those that are not aircraft carriers, because they do not have airplanes. These are, the seven classes of STOVL aircraft carriers, currently active in the world. Let's look at its main STOVL elements. This type of aircraft carriers, uses a longitudinal runway to its axis, with the exception of the Italian Cavour. Recall that, all Catalbar and Stobar type aircraft carriers, due to their larger size, have a transverse flight deck. All STOVL aircraft carriers, have a sky jump takeoff ramp, except for the America class. And all these aircraft carriers, agree to use two elevators, for the vertical movement of their aircraft, between the hangar and the flight deck. Let's see, in greater detail, some comparative characteristics between these vessels. should be noted, among all these STOVL aircraft carriers, the most modern class, represented by the HMS Queen Elizabeth. With a second aircraft carrier, the Prince of Wales, which has been active since January 2020. Let's see, some comparative data between this STOVL class Queen Elizabeth, and the best American Catobar aircraft carrier, of the Gerald Ford class. English Navy, still has serious doubts, about the need to adapt these aircraft carriers to the cattle bar type. This is due, to delays in the design, of a really reliable electromagnetic catapult system. And, to the enormous costs that have this type of devices, apart from the enormous need of electrical consumption, that they require. Remember that, British aircraft carriers, 
do not have nuclear energy, as if American carriers do. In this image, we see the HMS Queen Elizabeth, in its current STOVL configuration, with its wing shift of about 40 F-35B. But this could be, a possible arrangement, a flight deck once two launch catapults are installed. That is, it would be transformed into a catobar type aircraft carrier, with its characteristic cross-sectional flight deck. And this would be, a second option. It still has two catapults, central in this case, and transversal takeoff runway. The problem, with this arrangement, as can be easily seen, is the little space on the deck, for aircraft parking. This implies a serious risk, together with the fact that, they only have two elevators for the raising of the aircraft, four in the American aircraft carriers. But also, the American Navy, is thinking of modernizing its current VSTOL aircraft carriers, of the America class. This is the current design. And this is, the possible new design of these ships, to transform them, into light aircraft carriers, or pocket carriers. In which, we can appreciate, the appearance of the typical cattle bar design, transversal flight deck, and three catapults. A curiosity, to finish this video, VTOL airplanes, usually leave and enter the aircraft carrier, on the port side. That is, the vertical takeoff and exit, they do it, as indicated by the red arrows, on the port side. and the entry, into the ship and, subsequent, vertical landing, also run on that port side, blue arrows.